Welcome friends and hello, I'm Hayes, this is Armored Brownies and I'm going to talk about this best spiky girlfriend anybody could have, her, Vetra Nix. And the entire process I went through to make this big foam costume because I'm super proud of it. I learnt a hell of a lot making it and I just want to bring you guys with me on the journey whilst I document everything I learnt as I did it because I've never made a foam armour costume like this before and I love it. I love it so much because I get to pair this with my prosthetics because I am primarily a prosthetic sculptor. I sculpt monsters and monster effects. And as you can see, this is how the entire costume came out all together. So we're going to go through step by step and hopefully you will get as excited as I am about having finished a costume. Because I do lots of things that I think are quite cool. We've got Zenyatta. We've got a whole suite of things that if you're familiar with this channel, you'll have seen. I sculpt a lot of things. I make a lot of things. However, I so rarely finish anything myself which is why I'm so enthusiastic about this. I tried to do this type of video with Mercy last year and with Mercy earlier this year. And from the fact that we don't have a finished Mercy cosplay, I think you'll understand why I didn't start this video series earlier because I was afraid. In fact, I expected not to finish this because it's the sort of person I am. I'm very bad at actually finishing a costume, but I've kind of approached this in a totally different way than I'm used to. And maybe this will help you guys. So where are we starting? Well, they say the most important things that you should invest in are the things that sit between you and the ground. So we're going to start with Vetra's booties. Not Vetra's booty. Come on, come on. We're going to keep this PG-13. These I am super, super happy with. They're so, oh, I, I love them so much. Of course, we have put a bunch of work into Vetra before even starting the costume. Click up here to go and have a look at how we did our full prosthetic. Though not the visor. That came later. So let's move on. When I started this costume, I was obsessed with planning. I sketched of everything that I was going to work on soon out on a little notebook. I took our character reference images, help, helpfully provided by Bioware from the main website, and I sketched out how I was going to make these boots because I bought a pair of boots on eBay, which were six inches tall because we know how tall Vetcher is and I know how tall I am. We take this pair of boots and some duct tape and some of this stuff that you're going to get intimately familiar with from me, some greaseproof paper. We wrap it in greaseproof paper and just go over it in duct tape. You can do it with cling film as well, but greaseproof paper is what I have loads of. And because I'm not a competent individual, I ran out of duct tape real early and had to use parcel tape, which I use for shipping out all of my stuff. So it's fragile. It's not actually fragile, but either way, it happily takes a pen nicely. So. We have actually used, we've, I actually traced around the boots. You can see me using the reference there where I traced around the boots and drew on the pattern I wanted to copy. It's not fantastically useful because really it's still, you're still trying to work on a three dimensional object where you've just gone on some parcel tape, but it helps for where you're going up and up and up and up. Now we move on and we start to cut this off and we actually make ourselves an ad hoc pattern that we know will go around it. And then just some of the stuff which I forgot that I should have done before I started to make the pattern because Vetra has these little metallic toesies and I didn't think about the order in which I was supposed to be doing this. And I had to put the toes down before I could then pattern over the toes and include them in the outline of the boots because unfortunately we're not naturally Turians. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> I love Anyway, um, now that we have the patterns, we can take some of the stretch leather that we're going to use for the bodysuit because the colour of the bodysuit is the same as the panels on the boots. Take that pattern, cut it out and glue it to the front of our boots because we need to think of the order that we're doing these in. We want to have these as the base and then the foam to go over them. It's going to cause some 
issues when it comes to painting, but it means that the boots will mesh a lot better and match our reference image if we think about that ahead of time. <laughs> Now I go straight back to my to my sketched references like a nerd and start trying to pattern out the rest of the foam bits on the side of the boots. I've done the toe bits and I've done some bits around the top and the bottom and the back of the infoot. So you're, you're seeing as you're seeing us layering it up slowly. The bits that go on top of each other, the bits that appear thicker, want to be done last and want to use the other bits as a base. And thankfully, because it's all symmetrical, we only need to pattern it out once and then we can just cut over it each and every time. But when we're doing it, we're making sure we're using a very sharp knife. I cut myself a hell of a lot doing this. But don't be ashamed to pick up big box of scalpel blades and change your scalpel blades often. And when you're cutting your foam, cut at a 90 degree angle and go along and you'll get nice crisp corners like you see on these boots. And you can see that they're, they're shaping up. They are shaping up at this point. <laughs> oh, brings back memories. This was months ago. So from there, we can carry on bulking out details. The big bits on the back to create the digital gray kind of effect. You can just kind of create a box out of the foam and build it out of foam and then score along the edge of that bit of foam so it folds at a steeper angle and makes it look much nicer, which is really cool. If I had patterned it out better, it probably would have looked better. And speaking of looking better, I'm in two minds about whether or not to cut the heels off these boots. So I've done judicial grade boots where I take the boots, I raise the front of them and then take the heel off and I'm up on my tiptoes the whole time. And I don't know if I'm going to do that because I have the calf strength for it, but do I have the calf strength to do it for six, eight, ten hours at a time for the entire running length of a Comic-Con? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I will replace it with some Perspex or something. That... Ooh. Oh, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now we are going back to putting details on. Okay. There are lots of de details around the edges, which are 3D, but recessed, if that makes sense. So we build them out. And then what we are going to do in a minute is we, were, we are going to sink them in or make them look like they're sunk in by going around with a soldering iron. That creates a really good layering effect between the two, between the two different things. For these soldered on details, we are making sure we're using a straight edged so that all of them are as straight as possible. Because even if we haven't, even if we haven't got really nice edges cut out of the foam, having the details look nice and even and straight will just fool the eye into making, making you think the entire thing is much higher quality. And, and yeah, and this is where we get to have a little bit more expression with it because you can pick out different parts of it, make different parts of your models look good or bad or put in a couple of little extra details because some of cosplay is upscaling your reference images because because even though yes we have photorealistic graphics now um they're not rendered as it would be for a full person Th these these uh these things are let's just say that so and some and some of it is a little bit too fine to do with foam so you have to adapt it somewhat and take some liberties, some creative liberties. <laughs> However, there's something we've almost forgotten to make sure of. <laughs> and that is checking to see if they still fit. Uh, because we are going to be restricting how much the leather or the material of the boot or shoes will fit. And rather than create a temporary cover for our boots, we are going to be gluing everything to them permanently. So it's not like we can take them off and stretch the boots out afterwards. We could probably use a boot stretcher on them thinking about it. That might make them a bit more comfortable. Be able to wear them for a bit longer. Huh. I might look into that. Thank you. Anyway, now that we've made sure they do still fit, we can carry on gluing things to them because we that means we don't have to now cut everything off, which admittedly I do have to do a couple of times 
as we go forward with this project, but thankfully the boots are nailed first time in a very ad hoc fashion. And that very ad hoc fashion, you can see me kind of progressing here using our greaseproof paper or parchment paper or whatever you call it. You can use brown parcel paper for it if you like, but I think I feel that's a bit, it's a bit too teary. You can do anything from drawing out from the reference, holding the parcel tape up to your thing to make sure it's the right size, like you see me doing here, and then cutting it out. For the leg flappy bits, <laughs> of the Tyrion. I'm sure they've got a name. Are they fins? I don't know. We actually laminate some foam to some other foam because if you heat gun some foam into a curve and then glue it and then heat gun some more foam into a curve or even not heat gunned them into a curve but just curve it and put some other foam on it and glue it in a curve, the tension of the two pushing against each other or trying to pull against each other to uncurve themselves will hold them in a shape. We do that for making horns, we do that for making claws, and we can do that for making these leg flangles bits. <laughs> but of course, having a heat gun on standby to actually get them to hold a curve is never a bad idea, especially for Ava foam, which takes heat very well, which hopefully you'll have access to like, uh, I don't wanna call them basic hand tools, but they're not advanced power tools, I don't think. Because we've laminated in a nice curve, the leg for navy glue to the outside of the boots. The boots themselves, we've actually stuffed with paper as well to make sure they expand out and stay as big as possible so that they won't end up too small for us. Which is, isn't a mistake I've made in the past, but it is exactly the sort of thing I could see, my, see myself making. And this is the sort of thing, it's basically using your final prop as its own duct tape dummy, if that makes sense. Only you're not filling it with expanding foam because that would do bad things to it. So yeah. So once we have the big pieces, like the leg flang flangly bit and the base bits and the ankles, we can start putting together more details at the top and at the bottom and blah, blah, blah. Because once you have your big pieces to the right scale that you're happy with, everything else then falls into place. So it's, it's one of those ordering things, do things in the right order and the other stuff will look good with it. Uh, uh, the back of Vetra's boots have a kind of calf shield, which is a useful thing to have because I don't know if Turians have hand, hamstrings, but it's not gonna be good to have those cut. Wait, hamstrings are below the calf. Oh, just, just, Ignore it, the joke's there, fine? Okay, so we know what a dome looks like and this is kind of two bits going together at a curve, almost like a dome. We could use a pattern for this, but we have a lot of foam. We can afford to screw it up a couple of times and just test things. Thankfully, I think, personally, it went quite well the first time, but you know what? We probably should have got a pattern because there's lots of dome patterns online. We could have followed that and we might have come up with something that looked a little better on the back and not uh, and not like had the had the ooh and ah about it, but it worked. And here's a close up of my glue tin. It shouldn't have that hole in it. And this led to one of the terrible, terrible bodges I had to do. I ran out of that glue. Well, no, I didn't run out of it it all set inside the can. It was basically impossible to use because unfortunately it broke at some point and all the solvent evaporated. What I did have, however, was some spray adhesive. Now, spray adhesive is not good for gluing two things together that are just really thin. Spray adhesive is good stuff, but only for big, large sections. If you're gluing a sheet of foam to another sheet of foam or a sheet of foam to a sheet of fabric that it's not going to seep through, it's perfect. It's great however you can't aim it because it comes out in a big nozzle a big spray you can't aim it at the edge of some foam so what i ended up doing was spraying it onto some greaseproof paper which as it says is greaseproof so it's not going to soak through so i had a little puddle of this and then i would run the edge of the foam along it and use it like it was contact adhesive because it's spray adhesive is contact adhesive it just comes out of a spray and 
it kind of worked. So, you know, um, experiment. You can do dumb things like that. I wouldn't advise it. Um, some of it I did have to re-glue later once I'd bought some more of the stuff. But contact adhesive, like this stuff, Evo Stick Impact and, and, and Evo Stick 528 is some of the best stuff for gluing foam and porous things together. I love it. Now we get to the cleaning up stage because anywhere where parts join or we haven't really got a good foam coverage, if that makes sense, I don't think that's the right way to say it, but if the foam is imperfect or has flaws in it, we need to fill it. As a model maker, I'm used to filling and sanding basically everything. It's, I actually really like sanding because it's the time that you get to use to make things just perfect. But sanding foam and filling foam isn't exactly possible because it is pretty flexible. So what we need is flexible filler. This stuff is flexible filler decorators chalk and some adhesive decorators chalk here as well. Turns out this stuff, I tested these both on my boots and this stuff, whilst probably technically more hard wearing, turns out adhesive chalk doesn't smooth anything like as well as just the decorator's chalk. Funnily enough, decorator's chalk is for decorating, so it's very fine. This stuff, which these these cans are fantastic because you usually have to push, push chalk through a corking gun and ah, oh, ah, oh, just controlling it and being very fine. But this has a controllable flow and a little and a little nozzle on the top of the can. And the can's nice and light and not a big chunky corking gun. So like here, you can run it along the edges where any materials meet. It'll fill the gaps where something isn't perfectly nailed down and also and make your object look like one big cohesive object by the end of it, rather than a lot of layers of foam and you can just wet your fingers and run your fingers along it or do, do what I do and use various lollipop sticks and tongue depressors that you might otherwise use for mixing things because they have a nice round edge and you get a really nice subtle radius where stuff meets. So even though, even though the decorator's flexible chalk rather than the adhesive chalk isn't adhesive chalk, it still adheres really well because it has to, doesn't it, to fulfill its purpose in life, which isn't cosplay related, but then I think half the tools in this workshop aren't used for their intended purpose, let alone the floor mats these are made out of. <laughs> I order my plaster soap from a podiatrist. That's not a lie. They do podiatry and podiatry accessories and stuff for making prosthetics out of. Not prosthetics, but prost but like medical grade prostheses for legs and such and you like line the bottom of a thing so it um so as you're walking along on it it's more comfortable anyway and here's how the shoes look at this point before before we start trying to perfect them and i'm ah oh, i'm so happy with them i'm so happy with them. i'm so, i feel like such a novice when it comes to building these foam things i'm very experienced with using foam but nothing but not for anything armor wise i've made foam monsters i've made foam weapons and props but never for cosplay always for larp where the standards are different i, I don't know how to describe it now that we have something we're happy with with all of the with all of the joins between things we start to attack it with our soldering iron <laughs> don't do this with a normal soldering iron well, no, do do it with a normal soldering iron. Just don't do it with one that you want to then go and solder with afterwards. Because this will ruin it. This, it's a smell of burning. Make sure it's well ventilated. I got, I did all of this on stream. This entire costume was made streaming. You can come and join us. It was a fantastic time. People got to see the costume from start to finish. But I got moaned at by people in chat for not having a breathing mask on for this because... I'm not a clever person and I had a cough actually the day after I didn't but I wore it for half the time uh, but these are the finished boots I say finished that's all the foam work finished and oh they looked so good it's like my it's like seeing my children when they were young oh. and that's how they, that's where they got to thank you so much for joining me and next time we will start going into how the torso was made. Here's a little sneak peek. So remember to like the video if you like the costume and the character. 
subscribe to see the rest of it and also or also any tips for future builds i would love to have or if you learned any or if you learned anything from this yourself let me know see you later